defense. Sam Moore had seventh in the country in scoring defense, while UT Martin 24th in the country in scoring offense. Deontay Miles to jump it up with Issa Muhammad, and it's the Skyhawks and Jordan Sears controlling to begin this semifinal. UT Martin wants to push the pace and already getting a quick shot off. They like to get offensive paint touches and make it really difficult in the defense, oftentimes get to the foul line. Sears missing the mark. Jordan Latham bringing it up for the Eagles. You see their starters. The Eagles have dealt with some injuries, don't have a ton of depth. But they've still been able to put together another fantastic season. Team that was picked to win the OVC, Moorhead State. Khalil Thomas gets the Eagles on the board. 6'5 grad student from New Orleans. He's never shy to take that three-point shot. Step back from deep, over 40% a clip. That's talent, man. Yeah, 42% for Thomas from three. That's the best in the conference. Take a look at the UT Martin score starting five. KK Curry with the first points. For the Skyhawks, 6'6 senior out of Cleveland, Tennessee. Both of these teams shoot the three very well. Top two three-point shooting teams in the conference in terms of made threes. Minix, OVC player of the year, double team, loses the basketball. Back the other way quickly comes UT Martin. Cruz, he'll try a three, but off the front rim. And quickly with the rebound, Latham for Moorhead State. Well, right now, you're seeing it being the tempo that UT Martin wants. But right here, Drew Felwell, point guard with the basketball. When he gets them going, he's so good at sharing the ball. Look, he puts the ball exactly where his teammates want it. If Felwell plays well tonight, Moorhead State's going to play well. Miles off the heel with that last shot. Curry, he'll try it. Got it. Five points for UT Martin, all courtesy of K.K. Curry, who averages just over seven a game. Not a great three-point shooter, but a guy that can fill it up, driving the ball, not afraid to take those three, shoots with a lot of confidence. An eight-three made by Curry all year. Thomas, he'll try and hit. Again, these are two teams that like to shoot the three and are good at it. Thomas going back-to-back, -back too. One-point lead for the Eagles. It's going to be important for Moorhead State to limit those threes, as you had mentioned. And they have to have an answer for Jordan Sears and Jacob Cruz, two players for UT Martin that are first-teamers in the conference. Curry being aggressive, and he'll be rewarded for that aggression. And, and see, that's what UT Martin is so good at under Coach Ryan Ritter. Getting offensive paint touches, attacking the basket, and if they don't get a good shot off, oftentimes they get fouled, so they get to the free throw line. UT Martin can score a lot of points at the free throw line. A terrific strike shooter, 77% as a team. That is outstanding. Gary, 71% himself. Sits 14 points from 1,000 for his college career, which began at South Alabama, played there for a couple of years before finding his way to Martin, Tennessee. One point lead for the Skyhawks. Some little full court pressure after the made free throw, a little zone press. Yeah, Williams all over Latham. This Moorhead State team has so many set plays. It's, it's, it's amazing how well they execute, how many they have. Thomas, the open look. Wow. Wow. A trio of threes already for Thomas. 96 May 3 for Khalil Thomas. That is a Moorhead State single season record. Curry gets it inside to Cruz. Cruz double team. Across the lane to Muhammad, pump fake, and unable to get it to go, but gets the follow. First basket for Issa Muhammad, the transfer from New Mexico State. He's about 57% from the field. That's high percentage. You have to block him out. Don't give him second chances. Thomas, unable to connect. Muhammad gets the board. Lob pass 
from Muhammad to Cruz, but Cruz unable to finish. And Felwell will bring it up deliberately for Moorhead State. Felwell around the Minnick screen, now gives it to Minnick. He can shoot the three, 6-7 forward. Felwell works his way inside, Sears with the rejection. <laughs> They'll stay with the Eagles when we return. A little bit of a statement right there. Point guard on point guard, and Sears not having any of that drive. First one, the step back three point shot that was impressive coming off a little bit of a handoff that time He gets that nobody guarding him and then a kick out three point shot with the extra pass the hockey assist He has been on fire his teammates are hitting him in stride at the right time and look I, You know if, I, if I'm Moorhead State I want him to make as many threes as I can but I want to get some other players involved too because we're still early in the game They got to get loose and feeling good trying to get someone else involved, but Latham misses Sears all the way to the basket and able to connect. Jordan Sears was not going to be denied. The 5'11 junior from Daytona Beach. Leading scorer in the OVC, averaging more than 21 points per game. No fear whatsoever. Latham. Nice lob and a nice finish by Deontay Miles. Beautiful pass by Jordan Latham. Second leading scorer on this team. A lot of attention on him, and he kicks it out for a teammate. Open three from the right corner. Williams unable to connect. And it's going to stay at this end. Look, all the attention on Lake. He's a terrific scorer, but the screen and roll, great pass, great look. Deontay Miles with the flush home. Nobody on him. Double team on Lakin. Leaves Miles wide open. Slip into the basket for the alley -oop. Miles, a seven-footer, showing some athleticism there. Latham will take a seat here. Muhammad gives it back to Sears. Sears from the elbow. Rebound skied for by Minix. He averages nearly 10 boards per contest. Elbow working against Sears. Dueling number threes here. Not uncommon to see Moorhead State run the shot clock down. Fellwell trying to go to the basket. And he got hit by Issa Muhammad. Now we just talked about how it'd be a good idea for them to get some other players involved offensively right away. He got the alley-oop pass from Latham to Deontay Miles. Now next possession, Drew Fellwell able to penetrate and attack the basket. He'll get at least one or two points here at the free throw line. Fellwell has spent all four years of his college career at Moorhead State. 6-3 senior from Orlando, Florida. And Moorhead State, Drew Felwell, 92 wins in his time at the school with Preston Stradlin, the head coach, winning his player in Moorhead State's history. Amazing. And able to hit the second free throw. All nodded at 11. It's funny to say that about Felwell. I mean, all four years, they've had 20-plus wins in his career. Yeah, five straight 21 seasons for Moorhead State. Muhammad unable to finish. Eagles with a chance to break the tie. Winner of this one plays Little Rock tomorrow for the OBC Championship and a berth in the NCAA Tournament. Will be the first ticket punched for the NCAA Tournament tomorrow night. Running one-hander doesn't go for Khalil Thomas. Skyhawks, per usual, looking to push. Warhead State does a good job getting back. Cruz off the screen. And Stein for the rebound. Eddie Ricks the third, the freshman from Parksville, Tennessee, for the Eagles. Lennox. Muhammad draws his second foul. Such a load inside Riley Minix. Oh, he's huge. He's strong. He's physical. Oh, Coach Preston Spradlin told us earlier in the season, he goes, watch Minix when he comes out to warm up. Look at his legs. His quads are massive. He's the strongest player in his time that he's ever had here at Moorhead State. Just physically strong. Now, before he even came to Moorhead State, he had about 2,500 career points. He had about 1,300 rebounds. All-American at NAI and Comes to Moorhead State and he just crushes it. Player of the year in his grad transfer year. And he was a two-time Sun Conference Player of the Year. That's the conference that Southeastern College is a part of. That's where Riley Minnick spent 
the first four years of his college career in Lakeland, Florida. But yeah, over 2,000 points and over 1,000 rebounds in his four years at Southeastern before transferring for his grad year at Moorhead State. Already three ties and six lead changes in this one. Sleed favors Moorhead State. K.K. Curry got it. Ten points for K.K. Curry. First time he scored in double figures in ten games. Two three-pointers for him, though? That's right. <laughs> He's made nine on the season. Timely. Menix. Can he connect? He cannot. Halfway down, Cruz clears it. Curry to Williams in the corner. Good box out underneath to get the rebound by Zach E.I.M.E. E -I -M -E. Nice move. Pretty move. Everything but the bucket. Sears doesn't have the numbers. He'll slow things down. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> Sears reverse. Oh, 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 oh. move. Jordan Sears. His second basket of the game comes in spectacular fashion. Oh, my goodness. Three-point lead for the Skyhawks. Lennox. Latham around the screen. Latham off the glass. Can't connect. And a foul underneath. Jordan Sears, leading scorer in the conference, does it a lot of different. Follow their passion, and that being at this point, the sport of basketball, and them to do it together, obviously is very special for uh, myself and my their mom, that's for sure. Now, your head coach, son, Ryan, has told us all the time that you're more nervous oh, watching his games yeah, than you are the 750-plus whatever wins you've had in your career. Not even close. Every mom and dad knows exactly when you see your sons or daughters participate and compete. You're more nervous, and you want it more than they actually do. But we got it. we've got the gift of perspective in life. We understand what the real mission of coaches is, and that's to impact young people's lives. So we couldn't be more proud of those guys. Now, head coach Ryan says his little brother, assistant coach Reed, was a better player, player than him. Can you speak to that? I, I, both sides of the floor. Definitely Reed's a, he was a bucket getter offensively, a lot better than Ryan. Ryan was that much better than Reed on the defensive end, right. without a doubt. All right, we'll ask a question for you. UT Martin, can they pull it out this weekend and win the conference championship? Tough matchup. Well, two very well-coached teams, and they've split those series in uh, high level of basketball. They all got both pieces. It's going to come down to a shot here or there, I think. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, does it? Yeah, thanks for that. That's it. Back to you, Robert. The basketball court at Embry-Riddle, named for Steve Ritter and his wife, Vicki. 35th season as the head coach at Embry Riddle. They were in AI, now Division II. As the layup attempt missed underneath by Moorhead State, thanks to Richie Schuler and Steve Riddle. Ritter for that interview. Was a whistle and a foul called on Moorhead State on the rebound. So I'll stay with UT Martin and head coach Ryan Ritter in his third year. Sure enough, that's what they called. So Cruz will get to shots here and UT Martin will have the ball and you think about how tightly played this game has been so far well, this could be a, a key turning point Cruz six in the conference at 82 percent from the line you know we talk all about Jordan Sears conference leading scorer with good reason averages 21 a game Cruz not too shabby himself averages 19 points a game Cruz and Sears, the second highest scoring duo in Division I basketball this year. It's absolutely incredible. You look at their numbers, those two, in the last six games. They're averaging together uh, over 58 points per game in the last six contests. <laughs> Can you believe that? Almost 60 points between two players in the last few weeks. So the Skyhawks with a chance to get some more points on this possession after the hook and hold called on Latham. 
Sears from the foul line got it. So that winds up being a four-point possession for UT Martin. And they have the largest lead of the game for either team. He's good, just okie dokie and yo yo with the ball, getting in the paint and getting good looks like that. It's really remarkable. He can get different angles for mid range shots. Three pointer left wing, and that's knocked down. Ruth Thelwell. Moorhead State had missed eight of their previous ten shots before that three for Thelwell, his first today. Sears trying to get to the basket, cut off along the baseline. And now Kobe Jeffries will reset. Jeffries from the elbow. Moorhead State gets the rebound, courtesy of Thomas. Point lead for UT Martin. Minix with a chance to get Moorhead State back the lead, and he does just that. Riley Minix, a 34% three point shooter. He hit two yesterday in the win over SIUE in the quarterfinals. Sears, tough shot. Two free throws coming. How many times did he cross the ball over and make his t uh, defender? Get out of position and on the other side Riley Minix we talk about how good and physical he is inside But his ability to shoot the three-point shot as a big man is so smooth man Hits mid-range fadeaways in the paint. He's a back-to-the-basket kind of guy and he can shoot deep real deep Jordan Sears looking to add to his six points. He had 34 points in the last game for UT Martin Last Saturday against Tennessee State. Sears with at least 20 points in five straight games coming into tonight. First game of the tournament for UT Barton, which has a two seed. Got a bye to this semifinal round along with number one seed Little Rock, which won earlier to advance to the championship game. So Sears now with eight. We're all tied at 21. Okay, I'd like to go into this 2-2-1 zone after made free throws. Slows down the opponent, takes them out of their offense a little bit, utilizes a lot of shot clock. And now, look, they haven't even gotten their offense yet, and we're halfway through. Fourth time the score has been tied already. Latham trying to get to the basket, unable to do so successfully, and back the other way comes Jeffries. Jeffries, he gets blocked from behind, rejected by Eddie Ricks, the third. Ricks up, minutes will pull that. There it is. Minix. Yes. Second three for Minix. And it's the two man game between the top two leading scorers for Moorhead State. Minix and Lathan. Pick your poison. Pick and roll, pick and pop. You have to guard one more than the other. They leave Minix open for the wide open deep three. Sears from the elbow. Got it. <laughs> He's effective, isn't he? Mid range off the bounce. It's like the lead, at least the third shot he's made from mid-range off the off the dribble Warhead State with the ball leading by one Tellwell trying to increase it and he does Barely leaves his feet when he shoots it <laughs> Second three for Thelwell talked about how Thelwell needed to play well. He gets the Eagles going on that end of the floor. How about Moorhead State? Seven of ten from three. My goodness. Sears. <laughs> what an answer. This has been a lot of fun. You talked about how two great three-point shooting teams are just answering each other one after the other. Even the big 12 regular season in their first year in the conference. These two teams playing to get to their conference tournament. Final tomorrow against number one seed Little Rock with the winner being the first team in 2024 to punch their ticket to the NCAA tournament. Well, Latham turnaround. Oh wow. Unable to connect and Muhammad back in the game, the rebound for the Skyhawks. And Moorhead State's just up by one point, but they're really doing a good job defensively. They, they've held UT Martin to under 40% from the field right now. Which makes them the best defensive team in the league. Cruz able to connect his first field goal makes tonight. The 6'8 junior from Hilliard, Florida. Four points for Cruz. He averages 19.3, third most in the OBC. It's good for him. They need to get him going. 
We've got an offensive foul here. It's going the other way, but Jacob Cruz for UT Martin. That's critical. As when he plays well, this team is incredibly dangerous. Him and Jordan Sears, the combo of those two. Khalil Thomas called for the illegal screen. Yeah, the only higher scoring duo for any team in Division I basketball than Sears and Cruz for UT Martin is at University of Denver. Cruz with the reverse unable to connect. And the board corralled by Deontay Miles. Yeah, Sears and Cruz coming in, averaging 40 and a half points per game. Denver's Tommy Bruner and Toto Tayanano averaged 40.8 points per game. And on cue, Jordan Sears adds to his total. He's got 15. That leads all scores. And see, that's a rare turnover by Drew Fellwell. He is almost three to one assist to turnover. And Jordan Sears, UT Martin made him pay. Here's a step back for him. Fell well, not that time. Strong rebound pulled down by Jeffries. Sears, NBA three. Oh! 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 <laughs> 18 for Jordan Sears in the first half. Trying to pick up his sixth consecutive 20 point game. For a while there, like the Celtics were unstoppable. But... Everybody has a lull during season at some point, right? They do, and the schedule certainly has gotten tougher. Had the loss to Denver last night. I mean, Moorhead State, they've won 10 of their last 13, but those three they lost were in a row. Yeah, Moorhead State started off 11 and 1 in the OVC. Uh, you had Lathan miss, I think, four games to injury, and that's when they got that three game losing streak. Thomas, yes. Oh, my goodness. Thomas, it's his fourth three point shot. Top two three-point shooting teams in the conference. Warhead State, 8 of 12. That's top two three-point shooting teams in terms of makes overall. Cruz spinning baseline, cut off. Back outside, Sears. No, Can he, he hit it? No, <laughs> not that time. And out of bounds, it will go to the Eagles of Warhead State. Cruz jumping over the Warhead State sideline. And his attempt to try and save that. UT Martin had made five of their last six before that three-point shot. Man. Now look. And man, and now they've switched over to his own. Changing defenses, making it a little bit more challenging for Moorhead State. But only fell all open. Short on the three. Sears with the rebound. Tries to outlet up ahead to Cruz. And Skyhawks are fortunate they still have the basketball. We knew coming to this game it was going to be contrasting styles. And We've talked a lot about you know, it's terrific scoring offensive team, an amazing defensive team. But I tell you, UT Martin has taken control of the tempo of this game. This has been all them. A lot of speed, dangerous pass, by the way. Yeah, Jeffries in traffic. Cruz, the shot fake to the basket. Nice finish with the right hand. Cruz starting to heat up. Yeah, he's 6'8", but he's not a post. I mean, he is more like a shooting guard, maybe a small forward. You see the versatility there. Five-point lead for the Skyhawks. Just over four minutes remaining in the opening half. Bellwell, some minutes in the post, guarded by the smaller Mendoza. Minix faces a double team, unable to hit off glass. And Muhammad clears for UT Martin. We've seen a lot of that tonight. It's double teaming when Minix gets the ball inside, and that double team there came from the baseline side. It's kind of a sp spook him as he turns baseline. Sears double team throws it away trying to get it to Cruz. Minix running the break. Minix pump fake unable to hit gets oh it back. Yep. Minix in double figures. You're seeing some big fellas with some real versatility. That turnover by the way was the first of the game for UT Martin. And it leads to points for the Eagles. Skyhawks still leading by three. Cruz gets it back from Jeffries. Shot clock in single digits. He's feeling it, man. He's feeling it. Cruz off glass. Unable to connect. Miles snatches the rebound. Coming out of that timeout now. More hit states. Kind of stymied UT Martin here a little bit. The pass. Oh, beautiful pass. Beautiful block by Cruz. Went right at the seven-footer Deontay Miles and said, not on my watch. 
a beautiful defensive play. He's only had one OVC game this year in which he hasn't scored in double figures. Well, UT Martin fans and, and, and L OVC fans will remember Lester Hudson, and he's the it's Jordan Sears, the first Skyhawk since Hudson in 2008-09 to be the scoring champion in the OVC. I believe Hudson's still playing overseas. Had some time in the NBA. No surprise there. Lennox. Nothing doing for him. And ball loose on the ground, and it's a shot clock violation. Thomas fumbling and leads to a turnover. I mean, we have to give UT Martin some credit here. I mean, they've held, you know, obviously they're beating Moorhead State by three points here, but I'm just looking. Moorhead State has got the bulk of their points from the three pointer. All right, 24 of their 32 points have come from behind the arc. Only eight points have come otherwise. Two points on a free throw. So six points have come from inside the paint. The defense by UT Martin has been dynamite, forcing contested outside threes. Sears unable to finish. Thelwell looked like that was altered. It stays with the Eagles. It's been tough for Moorhead State to really get much going inside last few minutes. I, I'm, I'm got to give a lot of credit to the Skyhawks. Their, their, their interior defense has been dynamite. They're, they're double teaming minutes down inside. They're forcing outside threes. They're doing a good job of rebounding the basketball. They've only given up three offensive boards. That's pretty good stuff right there. See Deontay Miles leaving for Moorhead State. A little shaken up. Teddy Ricks the third back in. Oh, well, the the double team. There's it is. Double. Oh, he split it and knocked away by Curry. Cruz nice pass to Curry, unable to finish. Lathan. Cruz may have gotten a hand on that. Here comes Jeffries. Jeffries to the bucket. Yep. This is the pace the Skyhawks want to play. This is the pace right you're seeing right now. Moorhead State bringing the ball up, getting into one of their sets. They're incredibly effective in their half-court sets. But UT Martin is just making them run in transition on both ends. Ricks contested. Instead, he'll go inside the arc, have that blocked by Curry. It's going to stay with the Moorhead State Eagles. Yeah, I think it's safe to say, Richie, for much of this first half, the pace has been more to the liking of UT Martin. And that's why half times are great. And you, you, you get back to the drawing board, will Moorhead State come back, make some adjustments, and they can control the tempo potentially. This is great right here. Oh, my gosh. This is the ninth three-pointer for Moorhead State. Got 27 points from behind the arc on fire from three-point land. First three made by Jordan Leif of the night, a 38%. Three-point shooter. Just over a minute remaining. Sears, the floater, trying to get his own rebound. He does, and is fouled. Sears, five foot eleven, doesn't stop him from getting among the tall trees. Averages nearly five rebounds a game. Six-eight guy down there. Six-five guy down there. Ricks, another six-seven guy. He out rebounded three guys much taller than him. It's like a pogo stick. And he's quick, tough physical great athleticism and he plays with maximum effort at all times and with the high IQ he has he has a lethal combination and we, we could talk all day about his scoring best in the league second in the OVC in dropping dimes that's right four and a half assists per game and also a fantastic free throw shooter at 84 percent unable to connect on the second and Mendoza Whistled for the foul. First on Sebastian Mendoza. Morehead State will have it with 58.9 to play in the opening half. Trailing by a triple, and of course triples is what it's been how Morehead State has been able to score. Fell well. A whistle away from the ball. It's by Jordan Sears, the second on Sears. And 
yeah, they're going to get Sears out of here. You don't want them to pick up a third with 52.1 remaining. You want some explanation from the official. Doesn't look like he's too pleased with whatever he was told. I don't think he liked the explanation from the <laughs> official. Bell well around the screen. Goes to the basket. Unable to finish. Minix with the tip. A dozen for Riley Minix. And that shot got blocked twice. <laughs> but still the offensive put back. Kobe Jeffries running the point. Williams to Cruz. Cruz double team. Eight to shoot. Cruz. Five seconds. Do they know that? Jeffries. He pulls it. Oh, and oh, oh. It. Clutch. Five points for Jeffries off the bench. Three seconds. Fellwell loses the ball to UT Martin with seven cents remaining in the first half. All right. Get time. Probably not time for a dribble. Maybe if you're in motion, but you got to shoot that thing. Mendoza. An air ball from beyond half court. UT Martin 14 and one when leading at the half. And that's where they find themselves after 20 minutes tonight. Over one point per possession, which usually wins you a game. And more at stake on the other side, less than 0.9 points per possession. That's a big difference and could be a huge impact here in the second half, particularly if they can continue at that pace. Morehead State, if it weren't for their three-point shooting, they might not be in this game shooting better from three than they are from two. We saw Morehead State in the first half come out hot. Khalil Thomas knocking down threes. See if they can come up with an encore, but maybe try to get the ball inside a little bit more. Scoring in the paint. Fellwell left alone. Rebound corralled by the Skyhawks. The other amazing thing, too, about what UT Barton did in the first half, so we talk about them controlling pace, they want to play fast. Just one turnover in the first half for the Skyhawks. Yeah, our incredible stat guy over here gave us a great stat. In the last three and a half games, they've only had 21 turnovers combined. Well, That's they just incredible. had their second turnover of this game. Nice pass underneath to Thelwell with the layup going against Muhammad. Eight points for Thelwell. Martin's lead trimmed to two. Trying to extend it. Williams, yes, he does. That's a long two for Desmond Williams. First basket for the 6 1 senior from Montgomery, Alabama. Thomas coming around the screen. Eight to shoot. Minix gets rejected by Curry. It was tipped. Two seconds. Got to shoot it. Minix, he will. I don't know if he got it off. But it's saved. Minix inside. Double team going up against Muhammad. And unable to connect. Minix wanted the foul. Looked like Muhammad was straight up. Quickly back the other way. Sears flings one up at the basket unsuccessfully. Until that moment, I thought Moorhead State these first two minutes have done a pretty good job of playing at their pace. It's a battle of dictating the tempo. Oh, oh wow. wow! Got that pin. I called it for two. And that's going to count. They're going to look at it. Okay. Was it coming down? Yeah. Now it counts. They, they explained to Ryan Ritter. Ritter agrees. Was, I don't oh, think boy. that was coming down. I thought it was. Let's see from here. Angle, uh, maybe slightly. I think it maybe hit the glass before the block. Well, the basket counts. Yeah, they counted. Curry unable to connect. Oh well. Thought about the three. Instead, comes around another minute screen. And it's going against Curry. The double team's going to come. Uh, Minix can't go anywhere. 
Double team comes from the baseline when he goes baseline. He has not been able to have an effective toast up yet. Yeah, there's Cruz coming with the double team, and Minnick draws the foul. This is how Morehead State wants to play. They want to grind you down in half court possessions. Coach Preston Spradlin's so good at drawing up a bazillion different sets that they have. And they've come out of the locker room dictating the tempo the way they want it. It was out of control in their eyes in the first half where UT Martin was doing their thing just how they like to play. Menix, three time conference player of the year, winning it this year in the OVC, his first and only season with Moorhead State, won it twice. Conference Player of the Year playing at NAI Southeastern College in Central Florida. 13 for Minnick so far tonight. You see Martin's lead trim to one. Sears trying to go to the basket and he's called for the offensive foul. He pushed off against Thelwell. Oh no. Oh no. He's got an injury on the floor for Moorhead State. Not what you want to see. Trying to get back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2021. This program has had 11 OBC, OBC regular season titles, but the success under Preston Sprint in the last four years, 91 wins. That's the best of any school in the state of Kentucky, including the University of Kentucky. Riley Minnick short on the three. Williams tries a three, unable to connect. And the rebound corralled by Moorhead State, Khalil Thomas. I mean, UT Martin has scored two points in the opening three and a half minutes. Why? Because the Eagles are able to play their pace. They're not allowing them to get up and down the floor in transition. And Moorhead State's a team, they're undefeated when they allow less than 60 points per game. UT Martin is bound to get above that. It's been more of a shootout there in the first half. Minix draws the foul. Against Curry, that's going to be two on Curry. Keep in mind, Jordan Sears picked up his third foul just before the last timeout. Got to try to find a way to hide him on the defensive end. So he doesn't get a fourth foul. That's going to be up to Coach Ryan Ritter right there. Menix, three of four from the line tonight. 84% on the year entering play today. Native of Vero Beach, Florida. Ten straight double-doubles for Minix. He has five rebounds so far tonight. Looking for his 15th point here. He scored in double figures in all but one game he's played this year. We're all tied at 43. Williams around the Muhammad screen doesn't take the screen. Ten to shoot. Sears trying to work his way in the paint. He'll try from the elbow and stand and knock it in. Jordan Sears with his sixth straight 20-point game. Again, the game has been slowed down. Got to find alternate ways to score. Moorhead State doing a great job of running their stuff. Another three. Another one by Khalil Thomas. He's five of six from behind the arc in this game. Tenth three hit by Moorhead State tonight. Cruz, reverse, draws the foul. That's a lot of talent on both these teams. It's Khalil Thomas. It's a great job of coming off the little stagger screen. And he's so he's not just a set three-point shooter. A lot of guys can catch the ball with their feet set, hands ready, knock down a three-point shot. But the elite three-point shooters can do it off the move or off the bounce. Khalil Thomas has been that tonight. Cruz, an 82% free throw shooter. With his first miss tonight, he's two of three. Seven for Cruz, who averages 19. And we're all square at 46. You're going to see UT Martin. They're picking up full court a little bit. They want to get the tempo going to where they're comfortable, like before. And near offensive foul by Thelwell.
Latham directing traffic. Williams all over him. Shot clock running down. Latham. Minix. Williams with the rebound and looking to run. Muhammad off the screen, then throws it away. Minix controls for Morehead State. Just the fourth turnover for the Skyhawks. Latham, step back. Williams with the board for UC Barton. Cruz, he'll try it and knock it in. No hesitation. Absolutely no hesitation. Catch, shoot, hand in the space. Those are the shots that normally drop for great three-point shooters. Second best three-point shooter in the conference at 42%. Cruz now with 10. Running Khalil Thomas off a lot of screens, running through the baseline, so he can shake him free for another three. Felwell loses it, and it's going to stay here. Muhammad's arguing that that was off of Felwell. UT Martin with the lead. Look at the shot. Little Rock, the number one seed, awaits the winner of this game. That championship game tomorrow here in Evansville. UT Martin with the three-point lead. Warhead State with the basketball. First half for Moorhead State. Drilling a lot of three-point shots, gotten a lot of offensive rebounds, and cooled off here in the second half. Minutes with the shot clock running down, can't convert on the fall away. Moorhead State's missed five of their six three-point attempts in the second half after shooting nine of 14 from three in the first half. Cruz around the screen. Muhammad can't hit the follow, but we'll try and hit a couple of free throws. Called that on Minix. It's two on Riley Minix. So, Coach Brian Ritter's UT Martin squad has not been able to recreate the transition style game that they had been playing in the first half. And now you're starting to see Moorhead State this entire half. It's been much more of a slower pace, and they're able to run all their sets. And UT Martin just not as comfortable in this style. It's, it's always a, a bit of a tug of war. It's nip and tuck. Who's going to be able to? play the style they want to play and, and, and clearly favoring the Eagles right now here in the second half but UT Martin still hanging in Just trying to find a way Muhammad makes it a perfect trip and Ryan Ritter's squad with a five point lead UT Martin has never been to the NCAA tournament since they moved to Division 1 in 1992 Morehead State trying to get back there the first time since 2021. Thomas with the second three-pointer for Morehead State of the second half. 18 for the 6'5 grad student from New Orleans. He's made six threes now. Six of seven. Sears commits the fourth turnover of the half for UT Martin. Skyhawks only turn it over once in the first 20 minutes. Khalil Thomas has single-handedly kept Morehead State in this basketball game. 18 points off threes and you now they've hit 11 threes 33 of their points from behind the arc UT Martin having a hard a, a, doing a great job of keeping Moorhead State from getting anywhere inside the arc with effectiveness tough shot by Latham case in point that's a difficult shot that UT Martin made them take Jeffries. Now Cruz double team dribbles out of it. Cruz trying to get it to Muhammad inside. Another turnover. Back the other way. No call. And Ricks has his shot blocked. A lot of contact right before that. No call. That's why you stick with the play. Great job by the defense here. Stay with Muhammad. Look, he's not going to worry about any foul call. Keep playing defense. 
12.03 to play. Moorhead State down by two with the ball. Phoenix, he can hit that. He's going to try and go to the basket instead against Muhammad off the glass and in. Willing his way to the basket. He has not had success in doing that so far. Finally got a bucket using the backboard. Seventh time we've been tied tonight. Cruz. Offensive foul is the call. Well, here's Riley Minnick's little shot. Fake, goes baseline, spin move. Finds a way to get it off the glass. Cruz, by the way, called for his first foul. And you see the turnover numbers there. Warhead State hasn't turned it over in the second half. Of course, it was UT Martin that is able to take care of the basketball more effectively in the first half. And now the Eagles have a chance to take the lead. Latham. Cruz skies for the rebound. Jordan Sears. With 20 points to lead all scores. Inside to Muhammad. Off glass. Good. Muhammad getting inside position. And Jordan Sears able to find his teammate. Minix, he'll try it. Short. Rebound. Skied for there. Courtesy of Kobe Jeffries of the Skyhawks. Sears off glass. No. Cruz loses it. And it goes to Moorhead State. Another turnover for UT Martin. Timeout on the floor. Skyhawks with a two point. At the Ford Center in Evansville, Little Rock awaits the winner in the OBC Championship game, which will. Happen tomorrow, Little Rock with the win over Western Illinois in our first semifinal tonight. Skyhawks with the ball down by two. Fellwell to the basket. Tie game once again. A dozen for Fellwell. Okay, both these teams had these point guards that could turn the corner and finish at the basket. Now Fellwell called for the foul. First on Thelwell, who doesn't get called for very many fouls. It's only the 26th foul he's been called for in 32 games. My goodness. One of the fewest fouls per 40 minutes of any player in the country. You know, Moorhead State had a little bit of a scare just a week or so ago. And Thelwell was out of game with a wrist injury. They thought it might have been just a little bit more serious. It wasn't, thank goodness. You mentioned he's the winningest player in Moorhead State history. Certainly wanted him in the championship run here. Sears unable to connect. Warhead State looking to take the lead back. Penix left alone. Got it. 19 for Penix, third three he's made tonight. Finds ways to be effective. That's why he's player of the year. Not getting it going down inside. But he's getting some shots on the outside. Sears, great pass to Curry. Yes, and the foul. So Curry looking for three the old-fashioned way. Minix right here. You see a little pick. Pops out. Three-point shot with a hand in his face. It's Curry with a hand in his face. And he goes down the other end. Sears delivers him the basketball. And he's able to finish. Every big man or anybody that's around the baseline, you don't have to be a big man. Kirk K. Curry is not a big man. He's more of a 6'6 wing. But if your point guard or any good guard is driving the basket, you're anywhere near the rim, you need to have your hands ready, fingertips showing, and K.K. Curry there waiting for the delivery, catch and finish. By the way, that foul that Curry drew called on Khalil Thomas, the third on him. Sears has three fouls for UT Martin. All square at 56. Well, well. Oh, and Minix call for the illegal screen, and that's now three on Riley Minix. How about that? We've got talk about Khalil Thomas, who's made six threes for him. He's got three fouls, and now player of the year. Yeah, he just moved his shoulder just a little bit. Thought he was staying solid. He's got three fouls. They're going to be really careful down the stretch here. 
There's that hard hedge again. Jeffries spins. Fight for the rebound. Moorhead State prevails. Under nine to play. Enix lost the pole. Thomas. Yep. Oh my. Has he not been remarkable? Seven three point shot. 21 points for Thomas, a new season high. Sears gets fouled going to the basket. I'm so saying he's elite. Minutes gets him the ball. He dances with a little bit, gets Mendoza off balance. One dribble to the left and knocked down a three point shot. Mendoza was contesting that at a high clip and still able to make that shot. And you see Latham now picks up his third foul. By the way, Thomas, last four games from three point range is 18 for 27. <laughs> That's incredible. Sears playing in his 32nd game. This is the 18th of those games in which he has scored at least 20. He has five 30 point games this year. Right now, looking for point number 22, and he gets it. Moorhead State with the ball, leading by a point. Bellwell around the Latham screen, now around the Minnick screen. Minnick left alone, can't do that. Riley Minnick does it again. 22 from Minnick, just got enough space from Issa Muhammad. And they are putting on a three-point display. It's remarkable. Four-point lead for Moorhead State, matches their largest. Cruz, unable to answer. Lathan gets the rebound. Yeah, Moorhead State takes the lead, they walk it up, they get into the set play action. Wide open three, right wing. Ricks can't convert. Williams, or Jeffries, with the rebound. Jeffries. Trying to get it to Muhammad inside, and another turnover for the Skyhawks. Riley Minix inside, along with Ricks, to contest. Here's your player of the year, pick and pop. A little cheap, 4% from three for the game, 14-26. And they have the basketball with the four-point lead. No team is led by, his, by more than six so far in this one. Minix, OVC Player of the Year, trying to go to the basket, and he does. <laughs> Tough bucket for Riley Minix. He can score in a variety of ways. Smooth. Six-point lead for the Eagles. Sears, reverse. Yeah. Wow. 24 for Sears. we have seen him do two like that in tonight's game. Look, I tell you, Moorhead State doing such a phenomenal job of executing, but it's going to be very difficult. You're going to see Jordan Sears going to take a lot of shots. Oh, my God. Bellwell left alone. They, they make a three every time I speak. That's 45 points from behind there, but Jordan Sears is going to keep attacking here. Sears, can he answer? Halfway down. The largest lead of the game for either side. Fellow is so smart. He, he recognizes the moment. Going to walk the ball up. Time is on our side. Execute our offense. Play the way we want to play. Fellwell. Not that time, but an offensive rebound. Ricks off the glass. Right. Coach Reardon is going to burn a timeout. Cross half court. Talk things over. Forehead State's hot. you got to give it up. For Preston Spradlin's Eagles. They're incredibly on fire right now. Largest lead of the night for either side. Moorhead State for Eastern 3 Central. And then it's a 260 second meeting between North Carolina and Duke. College game day tips off the morning at 10 a.m. Eastern from Cameron Indoor. There is no truth to the rumor that ESPN has televised all 262 meetings, by the way, between. UNC and Duke. That should be a fun one coming up on Saturday.
Warhead State forces another turnover, looking to extend this 10-2 run. Ricks fakes the shot. Open three right wing off the back rim from Latham, but an offensive rebound. Thomas. And this time, UT Martin comes away with it. Dodge a couple of bullets there. Sears. He's like a pogo stick. He really is. He's not going to stop attacking. They're going to put the ball in his hands, let him make plays. The guy that can get a lot of dimes to take away his ability to get to the basket. He's going to make plays for his team. So the basket with the answer, Thelwell. 17 for Thelwell. Preston Spradlin wants a timeout. Moorhead tied at 56 at the 934 mark. Moorhead State has been able to assert themselves since then. Nine point lead for the Eagles. Skyhawks with the ball, a chance to trip that lead. Five minutes to play. Cruz loses it, gets it back. Tough shot, rims out. Warhead State looks to walk it up anyway, and that really plays into their hands when they have the lead late in the game. Oh, yeah, let that time tick off the clock. Deep three. Missed everything. He started out seven of eight. He's lost, missed his last two. Look at the Thomas. speed. Jeffries. They have two coming his way. All right, so if they can knock down at least the second free throw, then they're probably going to set up in a zone pressure, 2-2-1. Two, two, uh, now, the 2-2-1 two, two, doesn't really look to force turnovers. It just gives a different look. So you might see them, that's what they normally do oftentimes after made through this, but you might see them pick up full court in the man just to pick up the tempo, potentially get deflection or a steal. UT Martin, 13 of 16 at the line. They're the top free throw shooting team in the conference. Jeffries makes both. Warhead State with the ball, leading by seven. Winner goes to the OVC championship game tomorrow, right back here at the Ford Center in Evansville. Latham, deep one. Who touched it last? It stays here. Seven to shoot. Seven seconds is playing the time to run a little bit of an action, a quick hitter. We get a ball screen at the top or look to get Minix down inside the paint. Bellwell trying to go to the basket. Blocking foul. I think it's a great call by the official. I don't know where his footwork was in defense. Was he on or inside the restricted arc? But I don't think that was a charge. Blood on the jersey with one of the players. They had to get that taken care of. But now Felwell's ready to shoot. Overhead State just four of nine from the line. Oh. Big difference here in the second half as we've seen Morehead State take complete control. Morehead State seven, seven turnovers in the first half, only one in the second. You know, UT Martin's had nine turnovers. They've given so many opportunities for Morehead State to score the basket on the other end. Open three, Jeffries can't convert. Ricks with the rebound. Seeing this Morehead State team that you know, down the stretch of season, we didn't have Thelwell for a game, didn't have Lathan for a few games with injuries. Two starters, they were down, they lost three games during that stretch. And now you're seeing them getting back to full speed here in the semis, trying to punch their ticket to the championship game. Jordan Lathan doing his part. Back to a nine point bold for Morehead State, largest lead for either team. Sears. Not that time. Thomas comes away with it. Time running short for the Skyhawks.
Bellwell. Ricks left alone. And it's out of bounds. It will stay with Moorhead State. Two teammates fighting for the ball for the Skyhawks. And it's to the Eagles' advantage. Moorhead State up by... Head State has been able to control the pace. Really makes things that much more urgent for UT Martin here. It does. You know, we talked early on. Moorhead State, to beat UT Martin, they have to be really good in transition defense. And they need to limit three-point shots. They've, they've held UT Martin to just six threes. And they've done those things. The first half was kind of ugly for Moorhead State. Second half has been all of them. Rick's unable to connect. Menix the offensive rebound, and he was fouled while getting it. Foul starting to mount up for UT Martin. Moorhead State is really dominated in the rebounding department in both halves and still can't get over the fact that they've made 15 three-point shots as a team fell well out of ricks ricks loses it almost lost it again open three is knocked down good latham second three of the night did I say 15 threes? I, I meant 16 threes. Hard to keep track. Yes, it is. Sears. He's doing whatever he can to try and get some points on the board for his team. The Moorhead stayed up by a dozen. Uh, this has just been an incredible shooting display. Absolutely incredible. Hey, Moorhead State is a really good three-point shooting team. They're not this good, normally. And it's taken that to take this lead against UT Martin and likely come away victorious. But what a fantastic job by Preston Spradley and company. Three-point shooting, second half, really dominated play, out-rebounding. Give a lot of points in the first half. To be exact, 41. Look, they've held UT Martin 24 points in the opening almost 18 minutes of the second half. More free throw coming up for Sears. Moorhead State last year was the OBC regular season champion. Tied for that honor this year. But they didn't make it to the OBC championship game. They lost in the semis to Southeast Missouri, which wound up winning the tournament. But Moorhead State with a chance to get back to the OBC tournament championship game for the third time in the last four years. Jeffries left alone, can't convict. And a foul on the rebound called on Moorhead State. You're right. Remember two years ago, it was the Murray State Moorhead State showdown in the championship. And that was a close game. And Moorhead State almost came out of that victorious. That's the year Murray State won it and went on to win the game in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, the Racers ran the table in the OVC that year. Jacob Cruz. Looking to make things a little closer with the one and one. And he'll get the bonus. Yeah, it's amazing when you think about last year, OVC tournament championship game. It was Southeast Missouri State beating Tennessee Tech. Neither of those teams even made the OVC tournament this year. Isn't that crazy? And, and, we, and we talked in the previous game, Little Rock, who didn't make it last year, are the number one seed this season. Already punched their ticket to the championship game tomorrow. Moorhead State. State calls a timeout after seeing the UT Martin Press. The retirement and benefits plan that works for your team. Two minutes and 15 seconds remain. In the second semifinal, Moorhead State with the eight-point lead. UT Martin with the full-court pressure. Lennox able to pass it up ahead, but then thrown away by Lathan trying to get it to Ricks on the alley-oop. And that's why you pick up full-court pressure. You're going to take a chance at giving up a layup. That was a careless turnover by Moorhead State. But it was a turnover nonetheless. It was, could have been a dunk. It was a turnover. Took that chance. Now you're down, what, three, four possessions, but you got the ball back. UT Martin rolling the ball in. 
trying to conserve as much time as they can. Jordan Sears. That is 30 for Jordan Sears, who's averaging better than 30 over the last six games. And now cut it to six here. So force another turnover here. Williams called for the foul, working against Latham. That's for seven. One once. Both these teams are really good free throw shooting teams. But, you know, that foul's worth it. What if Lathan comes here and misses the front end of the one-on-one? -on -one? Now they have the ball back, and they can cut it to three or four. And Moorhead State hasn't been the most efficient at the line tonight, just four of ten. Lathan. His first free throw attempts of the night, he's 75% on the year. Six nothing run for UT Martin ended by that Latham free throw. Drilled him. Clutch. Eight point lead for the Eagles. Sears unable to finish. Thomas gets the rebound. Not going to foul. wonder if they're going to throw a trap in this position. It looks like they're just going to play straight up. Eight-point lead for the Eagles. Minute 20 remaining, and that will stay here. KK Curry deflected it. Ryan Rivers going to call a timeout for UT Martin. They're going to take a look at that out-of-bounds call. Head right, look. Disappointed about that, but they got to play hard defense. All right, UT Martin with a basket here could make it a two-possession game. Of course, it's in the hands of Sears. Leads all scorers with 30. I think him and Cruz are going to play a two-man game. Cruz deep three. And Moorhead State gets the rebound. We got a pressure. Try to get deflections. Maybe trap here on the sideline. And look the foul at this point. Cruz gives the foul on Ricks, who's a 66% free throw shooter. Okay, so that's that's going to be the eighth team foul on UT Martin. So it's still 1-1. One one. So if you're the Skyhawks, you, you hope that Ricks makes that first one. And you push it down, transition, try to score. Fort Moorhead State can really set with all five of their players. Moorhead State, 6 of 12 from the line tonight. Wow. And Ricks unable to hit the front end. Still a eight-point game. Don't need threes at this point. That's what you need right there. Now pressure if you're UT Martin. How about that? They've cut it to six now. And they're going to use their second to last timeout. So both teams are still going to have one timeout remaining. But by calling out, these are always fun right here. So Drew Fellwell, the quarterback. How about it? Got it in. Look the trap. Good job breaking that press. Excellent. Ricks left alone. His second basket. And it's back to an eight-point lead. Couldn't have asked for a better job in breaking that press by Moorhead State. Because Moorhead State might not want to foul. They might, they might, they might let you get an uncontested layup if you get close enough to the basket. But if they cut it off, have some three-point shooters available behind the arc, especially in the corners. Sears working quickly. He'll try a deep three. Cruz the rebound and able to finish. Timeout immediately called by Ryan Ritter. That's the last timeout that Ryan Ritter has for the Skyhawk squad down six. They just need a spark. So now you're going to see Moritz State gets a piece of the OVC championship and potentially moving on here to the tournament championship. All right, we're playing some more football here. How about it? That was wrong. Okay, let's see. we got trips. Got trips on the left. Slot on the right. Omaha, Omaha. <laughs> Peyton Manning. <laughs> Here comes the trap. Get the ball in the middle of the floor if you're more has State. Great job. Great job breaking the press. Thomas finishes. And that's probably going to do it.
23 for Khalil Thomas. You're more at state. You need or, uh, UT Martin. You need to chuck some threes now. No choice. Sears does just that, but unable to convert, and that'll stay at this end. 18.5 to play, and Morehead State with an eight-point lead. Well, if they don't pull this out, you have to give UT Martin a lot of credit under Ryan Ritter's looking to attack it. That's all she wrote now. Tied school record for most regular season wins UT Martin did and tied the school record for the most victories in the OVC. Beat everybody in the league at least once. Ryan Ritter has been at three different schools as head coach, junior college and two division one, and he's turned them from the sellers to the peaks. It's been really fascinating to watch his career unfold. Williams to the basket, able to convert. Now that might be too little, too late. 9.4 to play. Get it in, make him foul you. There it is. Gonna, Minix is going to pull it out. Minix trying to avoid getting fouled, but he is fouled with five seconds remaining. And it looks like we'll see Moorhead State here tomorrow night. Morehead State faithful, excited, and trust me, they're going to bring two times more fans for the championship game tomorrow. Might be some folks starting their drive from Morehead, Kentucky, as we speak. <laughs> A three-point shooting display by Morehead State. Their defensive ability in the second half. The way Morehead State regrouped from first half to second half was really fun to see. That's halftime coaching adjustments. 25 now for minutes. As Morehead State looks to salt this one away. Sears jams at home. 34 for Sears. And that'll do it. For the third time in four years, the OVC Tournament Championship game will include the Moorhead State Eagles as they'll take on the number one seed.